The answer is no, you cannot eat TensorFlow or OMFLOW. They are not tools. They are tools for machine learning development. If you are a machine learning engineer or researcher, how many experiments or models have you trained for the past few months? Is it hundreds? If the answer is no, then stop watching. This is for big boys and girls only. You are not ready yet. Go back to watching PewDiePie or something. <laughs> Today's topic is uh, locking model training and managing experiments. In the old day, maybe you train a couple of models and lock the results with some tech files or spreadsheet manually. These days, locking this is more complex and the number of experiments increases. We need more powerful tools. First, for logging, I think TensorFlow is a great tool. It's an uh, open source library developed by Google. You can use it to record uh, numeric values uh, generated during model training, such as loss, accuracy, any kind of like, statistical metrics. You can also use it to record like, text or audio or image values. And then this locked data can be visualized with the TensorFlow web app. There are some silly features such as graph or smoothing, but overall it's just a nice tool that people even started using it outside the whole TensorFlow ecosystem. Another tool is Wisdom from Facebook, which seems more flexible and lots more features regarding plots and visualization, but it's a bit more complicated and take more time to set up. Uh, you need to have or run uh, the Wisdom service at the same time. The second part is experiments management. So you train like a bunch of models. Now you need a systematic way to manage and track them so that you can do some kind of like comparison or analysis. This is where things suck. There are a couple of open source library as well as commercial solution and it's still a developing area. I was playing around with a uh, comet locker. So instead of say you TensorFlow or TensorFlow X to lock my experiment, so this is an online service. Uh, you can say it offline too, but you can basically plug in the library, uh, export the metrics that you want to track, and you have kind of online TensorFlow kind of. Uh, for example, here you to install Comet ML, uh, install the experiment, and this is where you track. Uh, I guess you create a locker, basically an experiment where you create a cow. Uh, they gonna give you an API. Uh, you search a project name. Okay, and uh, the name of this experiment, and then you can just add uh, whatever parameter you want to track here. You can just click lock it here. So, in this training loop, I'm, I'm recording the train loss and then close the end. Now, I can track it online on their website because they provide this service, I think, free for individual with some limitation. Uh, I created this test data project and I ran this like four times, and it generally just four experiments. And it takes a little bit of uh, time to load. I think my internet connection is kind of really slow today, I don't know why. Okay, so they have four experiments. Uh, and you can name them. Okay, so I only track, uh, I only log the train loss here, and they visualize it. It's, it's kind of nice, I mean, it doesn't look it's similar to TensorFlow, I guess. And you can look into one experiment here. Now, besides tracking the, the metric or the value that you add, it also tracks the code. So, if you export it early enough, it actually records all the... Uh, it records your notebook, for example, in here, the entire source code of my training. Uh, the parameter that I have put in here, the output is basically the uh, std out, std error too. So, it records like, quite a bunch of stuff. It also record the environment too, like what... Uh, uh, what open system, what is machine, what kind of Python version I'm using, and you can also record graphic, text, audio. All the similar services are, for example, Neptune.ai or Way and Bias. Uh, I have tried Way and Bias before, I don't know why, but uh, when I used it, it single course really significantly slow down my training, so I, I hated it. While all these commercial solutions are nice and all, and it can be free sometimes, they are not open source, and it is not feasible or convenient to save the data to your disk. So you basically tied to their online service, which sucks. An alternative which is open source and also more popular is the tracking features of MLflow from Databricks. You can choose to use their hosted service, or you can run it on your own computer. Let's try it. First, let's start with a simple uh, model training in TensorFlow 2. 
and I'm using uh, tensorball X here to record the model training. So this is the symbol training loop uh, in TensorFlow 2. Let's start the training. You can see that it is running. Uh, number of iterations is going up. Uh, at each epoch, I guess I'm outputting loss and accuracy values. And I'm calling the tensorball X and specify where I want to save the log. Now you can see that it creates the directory uh, where the log files are saved. And then I can visualize it using the tensorball app. This is just a simple uh, tensorball uh, visualization of the, 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 that training where we have the epoch, the loss, and accuracies. So everything so far is quite straightforward. You specify where you want to save the log and then you visualize it afterward. Now if I do a different training, This is where I specify uh, the metrics and the stuff I want to log. Uh, that is, I want to save the input image, the airport, the loss, and accuracy. You can see that uh, once I restart the training, now I have two models and two training. Uh, I record the input image, which is what we're seeing here, and we're seeing the loss and the accuracy. And then we can just like compare the two trainings in TensorFlow directly. Now let's replace TensorFlow X with MLflow. I am specifying the experiment and the run name for MLflow, and then uh, the metrics that I want to log. And that's all. Now I can just do the training. By default, MLflow will uh, record the files in the ML runs directory, although you can uh, change it. Now we can run the MLflow web app to visualize uh, what has been recorded experiment Monday and the SVA which is the first ML run, uh, the run ID. You can see that the accuracy, the airport and the loss. Let's say we want to do a different run and we call it the experiment B. Okay, once we refresh, we'll see that the experiment B pop up in our ML flow UI dashboard. Then we can start compare the two experiments Overall, it's better at management uh, than TensorFlow when you have like a hundred experiments or a hundred runs. It still sucks really, really bad compared to commercial solutions. It lacks like tons of features. Even compared to TensorFlow, it wouldn't lock the audio and images. Terrible, terrible. It would seem that it's the best uh, open source has to offer for now. Uh, so look, let's look at this list of uh, all the offerings that we have here. I think Sacred is also very popular. Uh, I like the organization that it has, I think it saved the data uh, into MongoDB. And then uh, for visualization, uh, there are different kind of front ends we can use with Sacred. Uh, so I like that kind of design. But I'm, don't, I'm not a fan of this. Uh, API where you can annotate your uh, function. We have already mentioned uh, way and bias, ML flow, commit, ML, Neptune. How are big companies doing this? Do you want to know how we do this at Google? The secret is wait a minute. Uh, All right, I'm looking more credible now. We use TensorBoy at Google. Supposedly, you have done a hundred of trainings and you saved uh, the logs into different folders. For example, here, I have trained like model A, B, C, D, and so on. Now, TensorBoy uh, wouldn't be able to visualize like a hundred uh, models at the same time, but by using the log the spec here, I can specify uh, the experiments that I want to compare. So here I am naming uh, the first one, the first for experiment A and second for experiment B. And now I'm going to run a local tensorball to compare 
uh, these two experiments, I can visualize just two of them. So this is kind of how it is done. Uh, now, of course, some of these steps can be automated. You can choose which model experiment uh, you want to compare in the TensorFlow. It can be uploaded into uh, another like TensorFlow service, and you can send the TensorFlow link to your team or to other people. Now, <laughs> it's not a secret or anything. You can try uh, TensorFlow.dev. It's basically what we have. It might not be the best approach, but at least it's something that we can work with. In conclusion, everything sucks, and I need to take uh, a shower now, so peace.